Howdy folks, Brad coming at you here with a little mail day. I got uh, one pickup and a group break. First off, the uh, group break is, I did one break of 2020 Allen and Ginner. I had the, I bought the Yankees. And I hit this nice DJ LeMayhew autograph. Always liked the autos in Ginner. I always thought they looked cool. So very nice. They are on card if you've never had Ginter before. But back's nothing special. But always like the look of those. And I think he's one of the league leaders in batting average. I think I saw the other day. So that's sweet. And then this was a little surprise. This is a glossy mini. So it's just obviously got a little gloss over it. There you can kind of see it. And glossy minis are in fact 101. So it's a 101 mini of Roger Clemens. So that was pretty sweet. So those were the only two cards of really note. But two very nice ones. So I was very happy with that. It was a pretty good break. 101 Mini. So, these in person pretty much look like it looks on the camera. There's really nothing that special to them. But, uh, still nice nonetheless. And then I had one PC pickup here. Um, there's a guy on eBay over the last, oh, I'd say two to three months... He's selling off his damn Reno collection. And it's way better than what I have, even. I think, from what I could tell what he's been selling. And he has a lot of the 90s, early 2000s inserts and stuff. Refractors and inserts. And basically, you know, he just lists, like, you know, a certain amount of cards each week, you know. He's just been doing it gradually over the last two or three months. And I haven't had a lot of luck winning them because they've been going for good money, man. So, it is nice to see people appreciate those old refractors and inserts, you know. But this I got for a reasonable rate. Product I always liked. This is from 1998. Skybox EX 2001. And this is the Helmet Heroes insert set. It is an acetate. Style card. There were, I believe, 20, yep, 20 people in this set. Mainly good names, I think. I saw Victor uh, had a Yancey Thigpen the other day. That was awesome. But if I remember correctly with these things, these things fell one per box on average, if I recall. So... Basically, I guess the average is you would hit a damn Reno every 20 boxes then, I guess is the way you can look at it. So it's not like ultra rare, and it's not ultra common either. So in between, but I always liked it. They're really sweet looking cards. I always like the big helmet in the back. He's got a good picture, acetate. Just good stuff. So I think this cost me around 20 bucks. So... I'll take that. I always like these. I remember seeing a couple of them in the card shop back in the day. Not of Merino. And I was like, oh man, I always like those. So, finally able to win one of those. Like I said, this, this guy's got some stuff you don't see every day. And it's going for good money, man. So, I've bid on at least a dozen of his items. And this is the first one I've won. So, very nice. Um, speaking of the Dolphins, the first two weeks... Um, offensively about what I expected. Thought it'd be a little ups and downs. The offense has been what I expected. One good game, one mediocre game. Okay, that, that was about what I expected 50-50 on that front. The defense is playing worse than I expected. I expected them to be improved. And through two games, now, mind you, with all of your teams, this is two games in. I always look at the NFL season, I've said this before, in force. 
So I look at after the first four, the next four, so on and so forth. That's really how I, you know, so I'll judge them after four games. But through two, the defense is definitely worse than I thought it was going to be. It's not that much improved from last season. And with the acquisitions and stuff, it should be. So maybe it's just they got to take some time to gel because I'd say it's 50-50. Half of it's just you're just getting beat. The other half is mental kind of issues that can be fixed. So I'm hoping if they can fix, you know, that other half, then maybe it will be all right. Offense, it's going to have just ups and downs. But uh, the offensive line is improved. It's at least mediocre. (laughs) It was one of the worst last year, so... Well, I mean, we had a tough start playing Patriots and Bills, but uh, basically two different ways. One, with the run in week one, we lost. Week two, it was Josh Allen over the top. They ran the same two routes, and we just never stopped it. Now, the big thing in that game, though, is Byron Jones went out like four plays in, and I knew when he went out, man, I was like, oh, crap, because... Our defense is kind of built from the back to the front instead of a lot of defenses built from the front to the back. So when we lost him, we like to play man-to-man, just like like the Patriots do with them. So if you don't have the guys to quite pull that off, poor Noah Igbenani or whatever his name is, the rookie, he was just getting torched by Diggs all game. Howard was okay on John Brown. But the safety play wasn't it just wasn't very good in the passing game. But credit Josh Allen, he was on point. But it was a shame because we wasted a very good offensive performance, really. Scoring 28 on the Bills is pretty impressive. So get the Jaguars this Thursday. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what to expect with either of those teams. By rights, it should be like a 28-24, somewhere in that range. Should be semi-entertaining, but it wouldn't surprise me if both of them are just freaking ugly. It's short week, two mediocre teams, and it's like 12 to 9, you know. And <laughs> But if the weather's good, no rain and all that, it actually should be kind of an exciting game to watch. So I know people will think, oh, it's Dolphins, Jags, who gives a crap? Theoretically, it actually should be a semi-exciting game for you guys to watch. But we'll see on Thursday. It's a must, you know... Much win, just do want to stay into it. You know, like I said, we're not making the playoffs or anything as you already said that before, but I'm a little disappointed thus far in the defensive performance. So that's where I'm at with the Dolphins. Not the fact that we're 0 2, I'm not shocked by, but uh, how we got there a little bit. So, but uh, this past Sunday was basically Armageddon. Injuries just left and right to key people. And now I expected the hamstring and the growing injuries. Like Parker's been dealing with the hamstring. Jones had hurt his groin. You know, stuff like that, that was to be expected. I knew we were going to have a lot of those. But all these like torn ACLs and Achilles and that kind of stuff, that's just kind of random. And it's just hitting key players. The 49ers been getting crushed. So it's going to be a battle of attrition. And it has nothing to do with coronavirus. It's just so we'll see. Um, so far, what do you think watching the games on TV? I think from a TV perspective, I think they're doing a very good job. Like watching it on TV, there's only a few moments where you're like, okay, could have the fans there, but they pump in crowd noise. I think on TV, it's coming across pretty darn good. So and the quality of play has been pretty good just all these injuries so 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 far through two weeks in terms of how the games are played now of course there's a few bad teams that don't look very good but overall gameplay was a little better than i expected and we don't seem to be having way more soft tissue injuries than usual so that's stuff to keep an eye on that i was worried about early in the year but yeah just injuries in general just been nuts but I don't think it's it's not the type of injuries that are due to no preseason, though. So that's what's weird about it. But uh, either way, that's all I got. 
Um, yeah. Go Dolphins. Need a win on Thursday. It's the mustache versus the beard. Who you got? Bye-bye.